Hello, Augies Worldwide. I'm Dave Kassler, amateur radio call sign KE0OG. When I was at Dayton earlier this year, I stopped by the ARRL booths, they had quite a few, and talked to one of the lab people there. Now what the lab does at ARRL headquarters is test various products. Now to keep their independence, what they will do is they'll go out and purchase, anonymously purchase one. Okay, so that way they don't get one that somebody's had time to touch up, make perfect, whatever. They just get a off the shelf piece. And if there is a problem, they will contact the manufacturer. And I can remember one radio years ago, the FT747, a Yesu radio. There was something misset in there that caused the receive audio to be cut off at about two kilohertz. And the league noticed that and contacted Yesu and they fixed it in all subsequent editions and sent out a fix for those who had not had the fix. It was just a simple resistor that did it. What they do in the ARRL is use sophisticated test equipment. This test equipment is traceable to NIST or National Institute of Standards and Technology so that a volt is a volt and an amp is an amp and they can measure these things and they look oh the nethermost regions of these radios to try and find out how well they do and they publish all of that in QST. I am able to do some of that here. I'm fixing up some things so that we can test antennas against each other. I also have an oscilloscope, a spectrum analyzer, signal generator, and whenever I get a handheld radio to test, the first thing I look for is uh, spectral emissions to see how well they do, and I might add that the Chinese radios do not always do well. There are occasionally ones that do quite well. Now, what we're going to do is talk about what this lab guy talk to me about. It's the ARRL Clean Signal Initiative. What we're doing on our bands, we've got a lot of new hams and they're getting out in POTA and doing great things like that. I think it's wonderful, but they don't really understand what all goes on in the transmit chain. Now I'm going to speak today about microphone gain and how we set that. There are two elements to microphone gain. This is the microphone that goes with the radio that's in the reference design. And today, radios come with microphones and speakers. When I was a teenager, it was not so. You had to supply your own microphone and even your own speaker. So my original Yesu FT201 did not have either. So I had to get one of both. Fortunately, I had a nice little speaker, but I did have to buy a microphone for it. Now, there's two elements to setting the mic gain. One is how loud you are into the microphone. My recommendation is you use your outdoor voice when you talk into a microphone. Now, you don't want to smother your microphone like that because you can tell the quality is awful. Most books say to keep it two inches away. Hello, CQ, CQ, CQ. Uh, some people speak into the side of it, but I think something like this, hello, CQ, CQ. You've got to practice doing that. Now, if you do that, the loudest thing this mic hears is your voice. If you're out here with the mic gain way turned up, yeah, it'll work, but you'll also hear the tick of every clock. You hear your kids screaming in the next room. You hear people mowing the lawn outside and so on. What you're doing is using the microphone to pick up everything, and we don't want to do that. I've got a couple microphones here. This is a classic. This is the A-Static microphone with the D104 head, and it's a crystal microphone. So in the base of it, there is a 9-volt battery and a little screwdriver control you can use right here to turn the preamp gain up or down. And this mic is the same. People will use it on the desk, but again, you've got that problem of distance. So it's, hello, CQ, CQ, CQ. You've got it about that same distance. This one, the push to talk is that big bar on the side. Now, these microphones are still available on 
eBay and stuff. And when you do use them and you push this, it pushes a relay down in the bottom that includes in the circuit the little preamplifier. So what you're going to do is you've got this adjustment versus the adjustment in the radio for mic gain. Now this is one that I used for many years. This is uh, originally packaged and sold by Tentec. Okay, this is very similar to one of the Bob Heil microphones. I'm going to replace this with a Heil microphone. But you've got your earphone and microphone in one place. Where does the microphone go? Right at the corner of your mouth, right there. Not directly speaking into it, because if you do that, you'll get all the plosives, like the P's and B's and stuff like that. So you want to keep that there and make sure that you've got adequate signal out. Now this creates the problem, where's the push to talk button? Well, for this, you use a foot switch, okay? The foot switch, you press down on it with your foot and you're in transmit, let up on it, and then you're in receive. And you get very used to the idea of when you want to talk to somebody, you've already got the mic on, you've got headphones, which I like a lot better than the speaker. There's a little adapter you have to get from Heil. This goes into the radio. Hey, this is for the microphone and earphone. Connect them together. This goes into this, and then on the back of the radio, there's a place to connect this, which will cause it to go into transmit. Now let's talk about uh, the microphone that comes with the radio will almost always be a handheld microphone. Now the thing about the handheld microphone is that it has fairly good audio response, okay, for a communications receiver. Now if you're thinking about audio for recording, then you want a microphone that will take from like 30 or 40 hertz all the way up to 10 or even 15 kilohertz. This is a communications microphone and it goes with the radio that has a bandwidth of only 3 kilohertz. So this picks up about 20 to 3,000 hertz and in the radio it's further trimmed. Now, you've got two things going against each other. One is how loudly you talk into this. Okay, the reason I recommend you use your outdoor device, unless those in the room with you really object to it, is because that's kind of how the microphones are designed to work. So I'm using my outdoor voice now. And it's the voice you hear when you're sitting out on the porch and there's a little breeze and the kids are playing down the street and so on, so that you can be heard. And you do that again with this. Hello, CQ, CQ, CQ. And then you go onto the radio itself. I'm going to connect this back up here. Most microphones have a little lockering that you can tighten on them so you don't accidentally pull that out. Now, if you pull too hard, you can break it. Okay, so we're looking here at the front of the radio. And it tells you in here, in the manual, this is in basic operation, page 311 in the full manual. It says adjusting the microphone gain. Now set the operating mode to single sideband, okay? Now there's a multi-level up here. If you press that, you will get a little context-sensitive menu. Looking at the number of signals in the CW portion of the band, I would say there's a contest going right now. It's a Saturday, so there very well could be. Now there's a multi-knob up here. The audio and RF are different from the multi. The multi, you push the multi on the end, just tap it, and you get a context-sensitive menu. In this case, RF power is set to 97%. I'm going to turn that down to zero so that we can follow the instructions that they have here without us putting a, a signal out. Now, mic gain in the center at 50% is a good uh, setting to start with. Now, it says here, 
touch the multi gain, touch mic gain. So we're the easiest way to do that is oh, and just we'll touch touch mic gain. Okay, and push transmit or hold down the push to talk in the microphone. Now you get a red light there for transmit receive. Okay, and it's the transmit up here is outlined red around uh, white letters. Okay, now what we we don't have this on. It's doing everything except putting power out. Now I want you to note right down here, this is your audio spectrum. It goes from zero to three kilohertz, actually up to four kilohertz, but you'll note that what's going out is only three kilohertz because the rest is getting truncated. You'll also note, and this is very important, that the signal takes up the whole spectrum. If you have a microphone that tends to reinforce low spectrum, you're going to have to do some audio equalizing to get it to do the right thing. Okay, now this one over here is an oscilloscope, which shows that our audio is clipping. So let's see what we've got. It says, in the SSB mode, touch the transmit meter to select the ALC meter. Now, we've got all the meters up here right now and adjust the microphone gain until the meter reading swings between 30 to 50 percent of the ALC cycle. That's this one right up here. Okay, so I'm going to talk into it right here, and we're looking at the mic gain. We want it somewhere between 30 and 50 percent of the ALC scale. Now watch what happens if I move the microphone away from me. It doesn't go all the way up. So that's going to cause your power out to be low and make it harder for someone else to hear. So remember the two inch rule, 30 to 50% of the scale. Let me come down with the mic gain. The one I've gotten good reviews on is if we take the, set this at 50%. It does not go past the point where the ALC cannot handle it, okay? Now, hold the microphone 5 to 10 centimeters or 2 to 4 inches from your mouth and speak at your normal voice level. By the way, speaking much louder than your normal outside voice will create a problem because it will get beyond the point that the automatic level control will create a problem. Check the audio clarity with another station or use the monitor function, okay? And that adjusts the ALC. We'll talk about compression next time. Now let's see how good it sounds by turning on the software-defined radio and having it listen to the same signal. I'm actually going to ground it and then turn it on. Hello test, hello test, hello test. Test, test, test. Hello, 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 hello. How does this sound? Okay, and you can see it sounds okay. So what the book su suggests that you do right here is that you use another station to check the audio clarity. It says only for AM or FM mode, but it does pretty well right here. Now, if this thing is trying to transmit too much, you'll see the ALC try to back it off. Hello test, hello test. KE0 OG testing. The next one we'll talk about is compression. We've talked about the first two elements of getting your radio set up correctly. That is how to use the microphone. Okay, you don't swallow it, but on the other hand, you don't hold it out here. Okay, and that works for any microphone. Now, if you're, if you're used to flying an airplane, uh, because of the tremendous noise inside an airplane, I mean, you're sitting a couple feet away from an engine with a tiny sheet of tin separating you from that, and I guess it's aluminum. You wear a headset like this, okay, but you put this right up against your mouth. Now, there's going to be some distortion that's just the way it is. And the push to talk button uh, will be somewhere in the airplane. Usually it's on top of the stick or it's, they're on the yoke somewhere. And 
it's different for each aircraft, but they all work about the same. You push the button when you want to talk. Now, in aircraft, they've got this nifty thing. If nobody's pushed the button to talk, you can still hear each other and talk to each other, which is a great way to discuss something with your instructor or to tell your kid in the back to be quiet, whatever. So we've discussed how to use the microphone and how to set up the microphone gain. In this case, it's to make sure that we don't drive the automatic level control wacko. We've also talked about audio spectrum. You want to use a microphone where you have a fairly even spectrum. There's usually in the human voice, in the male human voice, a little dip from 1,000 to 2,000. Then you get the from zero to 1,000 are the push against your vocal cords. And from 2,000 to 3,000 will be the modulation done by your mouth, your teeth, your tongue, all of that thing to make it. And you need to hear both in order to properly interpret it. So we've talked about two elements in our transmit chain, the microphone, setting of the microphone gain. If you have a microphone like this one that has an adjustable preamp, you've got to go back and forth on those so that it works properly when you're using the microphone properly. I've heard a lot of people who set it way over here on the desk and you just hear the echoing of the voice around the room. We talked about see, spectrum, mic gain, and automatic level control will keep your gain from going too high. Next time we do one of these, we're going to talk about voice compression and how that is useful or not, depending on the case that you're looking for. Okay, so there you have it. We've had a, a wonderful chance to take a look at the reference station and talk about your mic uh, gain. You might want to take a look at it, take a very close look at your manual and see if you're running it properly. So, until we next meet, 73.